I could always tell when this guy goes on vacation because he comes back darker than me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought you were somewhere warm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, coming from Florida, you would think it would be like this all yeah. the time. That's how Arctic freeze up north. Yeah. You heard about that? Yeah. Generational Arctic. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not there. I want nothing to do with 75. <laughs> We good to go? What's up, guys? Happy Friday, and welcome to Titan Lifestyle with Big Drew. What's up, guys and girls? Titan Lifestyle, like John said, it's Friday. Glad to have him back in the studio. Yeah. Events, therapy of the week. You guys know how we do. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this week's actually a really good one, because uh, at this point, we're going to be talking about you know, feeling better, looking better, and performing your best, right? With HRT, hormone replacement therapy for males and females. And we want to talk about all the benefits and we can talk about any questions you guys have about hormone replacement therapy or any of the other therapies that we offer that you might be looking to do or if you're trying to reach a certain goal, whether it's to lose weight, build lean body mass, sleep better, you know, look better on the outside, but feel better all the way around. We can discuss those questions along with you and kind of give you our insight as well. Or you could just live longer. Yeah. You could look good, well, you could you feel good, that, you could feel right? great. But if you just want to, if you're doing all the above things, you Longevity. just want to live longer. Yes. For your kids, grandkids, or wife, yeah. husband. So. Freedom Life Productions, how you doing? Uh, hi to Drew Peacock. You want to just give a shout out. Amanda Nooks in the house. Carlos Tatala, what's going on? The Bebe Bay, what up, Scarlett? Frankie J, Javi, uh, YG Lee, what's going on? So let's get into the first topic at hand here. So let's talk about hormone replacement therapy. So. Males and females both have these hormones, mm -hmm. and they both do the exact same thing for both genders. But at this point, you know, different genders need different amounts of some of these different hormones, and uh, you know, it's all about a harmonic balance. It's not just about overloading one hormone and worry about that one and forgetting the rest, right? Um, and the common things that you might be feeling, and you don't even know that you might have a hormone deficiency or imbalance per se, is you could feel all these different things as far as being lethargic, Right, not being able to put on lean body mass, you're putting on a lot of fat mass, and you're not changing anything. You're doing good in your diet, your training, everything like that. Sleep patterns, um, energy concentration—that's another one, and uh, recovery. That's another big one that we might do. So if we go to the gym and we don't recover properly, like man, they only took one or two days before. Now it's taking me a whole week to recover from yeah. one day at the gym. Um, for females, it might be different too. So they might have vaginal dryness. Their skin might be coming dry. Um, and they could have all the exact same things I just listed, from energy to decreased libido to um, you know, decreased lean muscle tissue or muscle mass, and then putting out a lot of weight in some of the different areas, like their stomach area, which is visceral fat, or their glutes, or their hips, or anywhere else. I mean, different people put on different weight in different places, but usually for females, it's the breasts, it's the glutes, the hips, and, and the thighs. Those yeah. are the, usually the ones that get hit the most. Um, so what do you do about this, right? So we don't really want to talk about how you can fix these issues and problems because you don't want to just cover up these problems right. with a Band-Aid, right? Or you don't want to Google search either. Blood work is key. Blood work is key. Yes, that's correct. Um, you know, and you can cover up some of these symptoms. Like, let's say you're tired. You know, that's why the energy drinks, uh, you know, that business is a billion-dollar business, multi-billion dollar business, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you're really not getting the best you possibly can when you're drinking these things, whether it's the big, larger companies like what, what are Bang or Red Bull or whatever it may be, or Monster or C4 or anything out there pre-workout-wise. Mm. These things can be damaging to you internally and to your health. Um, if you overdose on these things, take a lot of these products, or you know, at that point, like you're using multiple products per day, right? So you take a energy drink in the morning, you're drinking a pre-workout in the afternoon, you're drinking yeah. another energy drink, another pre-workout. And then the counter effect, that you try to take something to fall asleep. So like yeah. in this day and age, people are taking something to wake up, taking yep. something to go to bed, yep. Yep. when yep. blood work could solve all that stuff. If blood it's a hormonal can. issue, then, I mean, you don't want to, it, the thing is, what the problem I see people have is the caffeine and the mega doses does give you a little bit of a boost. Of course. But they don't realize they're gonna need more and more and more, and there's yeah. safer ways to do it too, so. yeah. Um, Definitely. I, you want to be able to fall asleep naturally. You want to be able to wake up naturally without always having to take something. Yeah. So we're getting your blood work done, seeing where everything's at. Chances are there's something in there that's off if, you, if you're not able to fall asleep or wake up. Of course. I mean, obviously, stress has to do with it, too. If you're that's stressed out, one. obviously, we can't, I mean, we can't control that. It's your personal life. Yeah. But um, blood work is huge. I see so many people Google searching, how can I fall asleep? Or they, don't even, they don't even try to fix the problem. They just go right to, what can I take to make of me course. fall asleep? Of course. Whereas, you know, if you guys fix the problem, you won't need to take anything at all. Well, that's the thing, too. And like yeah. you said, we're overstimulating yourself with uh, caffeine or whatever it may be, right? If you're overstimulating yourself, yeah, it's going to be harder to fall asleep and stay asleep. That's because your body has a whole bunch of stimulants in it. And then you're complaining that 
you know, that you're, you didn't not get enough sleep. Like, I can't sleep at night. Like, well, the reason why is because you're taking a lot of stimulants during the day. Yeah. Right? And then it's a it's a spiraling effect because if you don't get enough sleep that night, you're waking up the next day and you, you don't got that much energy and you're tired again. Yeah. And then and you, you got to take more energy drinks. <laughs> you're stimulated again. Never, unless you have, like, a week off of work, school, everything. Kids, yeah. Then it's like you can't yeah. like, recharge. No, you, you, yeah. you can't catch up. Right? Yeah. Uh, and there is studies out there about catch-up sleep. So if you don't get enough sleep during the week, there are studies out there where they had participants sleeping during the weekend and trying to sleep longer hours or take n- naps during those days mm-hmm. to catch up on rest. And it did help. It did help the participants. So yeah, if naps, you, naps and stuff help too. If you guys, you know, you, know, it, you don't get that much sleep. If you have two, three hours, or even an hour in the middle of the day, yeah, cut your phone off, sleep for an hour. You know, yeah, if you have to or if you can. If you need it, you know, yeah. I mean, but, you know, be careful because you don't want to take a whole bunch of naps right before you're going to go to sleep either because your body's not going to be tired. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to go to sleep. You want to take a nap at 6 p.m. and go to bed at 10 p.m. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm talking about midday, it's still light outside. Yeah. You don't normally go to bed till 10, 11. You could do something like that. Because, I mean, I've done that. Like, I've, I've I do got, it every day. I've got home from work, yeah. literally, and it's like 8 o'clock, and I'm like, I fall asleep, right? I'm just, I'm sitting there, and I fall asleep. And then I wake up, but it's like 10 or 11 o'clock. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to be up all night now. Yeah. And that happens to me. If I fall asleep at like 9 or 10 and wake up at like 2 or 3, I'm like, yeah. now I'm up. Right. Yeah. Timing is key. It yeah. really is key. So, you know, when we get back to the hormone replacement therapy side, it's real simple and easy to do. From blood work, we can set that up anywhere in the country for you guys, in your zip code. I get that question uh, commonly. You know, how does it all work? You know, where do I get my blood test if I'm not in the state of Florida and in Tampa? So we would set you up. All you have to do is call or text us. And at that point, we'll get some information from you. We'll get the payment from you for the blood work. And at that point, set you up with the blood work. Prepaid slip, we send you. And then we'll send you a link to find where the nearest location of Lab Corps are in your area. And you can walk in with this slip. They're going to take the slip. There's no more payment. There's nothing as far as insurance needed. And they're going to draw your blood. We're going to... Go ahead. Now, real quick, he said they're going to be at LabCorp. Might not necessarily be LabCorp. So if you hear John say LabCorp, yeah. and then you're like, you call around, oh, we don't have LabCorp in my state. That doesn't mean you can't get it. It's just right. the, that's the, the major one. You know, yeah. LabCorp, certain ones are major ones. So there's there's only two that we use, right? There's LabCorp and there's Quest. So usually if there's not a LabCorp in your area, there's definitely a Quest, right? right? Um, so we've made sure we've covered most of these things. And we they're have... Both the, they're both the same test, right? Still full panel on both? It's the exact same okay. test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no better one. There's no Just better for people one. Listen. Okay. Yeah, there's no better w- right. one to go to. Um, usually, it's on preference or you know, as far as what you have in your area. Because some yeah. people don't have both. Some people like us, like we have Quest and LabCorp all up and down the streets. Yeah. I mean, we <laughs> can pretty much go anywhere yeah. in any city and get either one. Yeah. Um, but we use LabCorp, and the reason we use want to use LabCorp over anybody else, even Quest. Um, is that LabCorp gets us a result a lot quicker. I mean, we can get results very fast. At least two to three business days, we usually have all your results from LabCorp. With Quest, it has taken them a little bit longer, maybe one to two weeks to get all your results. So it does do a little delay there. But if that's the only thing in your area, we can get it done, and we can get it done as fast, and we can expedite the results for you. Um, after that, once you have your blood work done, we're going to set you up for a consultation with the medical providers, and they're going to go over all your medical history. So you're going to fill out your new patient paperwork, which you can have your medical history, your symptoms, what your goals are, your family history on there, the medication you're taking, all that good stuff. And at that point, you're going to be on there with a consultation with the provider. They're going to go over all that with you and your blood work in depth, telling you every test that you've had done and where it looks like where you stand. So listen, they're going to say, you know, liver looks good, kidneys look good, blood, you know, blood counts are good, um, you know, and go through hormones with you, whether they're low or they're deficient or whatever's going on there. They're going to go over it with you and then give you a personalized regimen and recommendations of what we want to do with you. At that point, you can agree to it, and then we would take payment, and we would have the, the prescriptions shipped over to the pharmacy so they can ship directly to you guys. It's a real simple and easy process. And, and what? And oh, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. No, and once you're in, you guys, you're in. It's kind of like if you guys have Apple and you have to set up your phone, and everything. Once everything is set yeah. up, you're in. I mean, I hear the calls coming in. People, hey, what's up? Yeah, I need to order this. Okay, no problem. We'll get it right out to you. I mean, it's yeah. real quick. Yeah. So. Once you go through this initial process, you're not going to have to do that every time. You're not going to have yeah. to call and explain every time. Certain things you don't need blood work for, but um, once yeah. you fill out new patient paperwork, you get your blood work back. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty simple. I mean, yeah, it's, it's real simple. Once you're in the system, it's like you call. Hey, what's up? This is you know, 
John Doe and uh, I need yep. some more Hercules this month. How many bottles you need? Let me get two bottles. Okay, okay, we'll sell them right out to you. Boom. Yep. It's real quick, guys. Yep. So it's once a, you're in there, you're in there. Yeah. It's a real easy process. Um, now, blood work and, and a consultation for hormones, you're going to need to do every six months. There might be you know, a time in between. If something's not going right, we might send you in for one or two tests. Mm. But as far all in all, if everything's going good, every six months you'll do blood work and you'll have a consultation with the provider. Now, if somebody feels off, just yep. to, real quick, if somebody feels off, if they feel like something is off, they can get their blood work done again, right? Of course. So it does. it's not like a situation, John said, every six months. You yeah. don't have to get your blood work done now and then wait. Start feeling funny. You see yeah. something's off. You don't have to be like, oh, it hasn't been six months yet. Yeah. You feel off. Go get your blood work done. Yeah, yeah. So but chances are, you deal with us. You're not gonna. You're no, gonna be good. you're not gonna want to do that. Yeah. The reason is because of that is, is we're gonna check in you every 28 days and make sure you're feeling good. Everything's going right with your therapies. You're good to go. And even in between the start of your therapies to the 28 days, maybe it's, maybe it's a week later, and you yeah. say, listen, something's off. Yeah then we're gonna triage that with our providers and see what we can do to fix that problem or what's really going on. Mm. And then make the recommendation we wanna do there. Maybe we wanna send you in for a free and total testosterone test with an estrogen test and that's it. We might test those things. Mm. But if you want a full panel done every three months, hey, there's nothing wrong with that and we can definitely do that and that will track your progress and you can keep that for your file too as well. Yeah, yeah I actually had, a, I got my blood work done about twice in the past, what, month? Yeah. So when I first got one done, it was like, okay, something seems off. Did you take any caffeine? Yeah, I had a lot of caffeine. Okay, well, <laughs> don't take any caffeine. So then I didn't take the caffeine, came back in, and it brought everything, brought stuff down a little bit. But uh, again, too, if you guys get your blood work done and you, you lie about what you did before you get it, don't take two scoops of pre-workout and, yeah. you know, drinking Red Bulls and I was at the club yeah. all night drinking and this and that yeah. and didn't sleep. Then get your blood work done, that stuff's still in your system. It's so make true. sure you guys are like, you know... You don't have to be fasted, but just make sure you're not stimmed out and all yeah. this extra stuff. Yeah. Because you want that to be accurate. Because if your blood work's inaccurate because of something you did, and you don't tell us or you don't yeah. follow up on it, now we're gonna, you know, Assume it's almost like cheating, and yeah. we're giving you something that doesn't. It's not you don't. You may not need, or you may need. So yeah. Don't be afraid if you get your blood work done. If it doesn't seem right, to go back and get it done again. Absolutely. Or let us know. Hey, this is, listen. This is what might have been. What caused that? Whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're doing your blood work, now there is a cholesterol panel on there and a glucose reading. So if you do want a true reading there, you're going to have to fast for at least 12 hours. If we've already ran a blood test on you, let's say the month before, and everything was good cholesterol-wise and glucose-wise and you're good to go there, then you don't have to fast per se, right? Because, exactly what I did. Yeah. That's exactly what I did. I, mean, I got my first one. The second one, I was yeah. like... I'm hungry. I have yeah. to eat it. Like, no problem. We already got everything. So, yeah. Because you know. those, those are the only tests that will be affected by eating. Right? And they'll let you know, too. The medical provider will say, like, they'll tell you if you need to be faster or not. So chances yes. are, if they're not telling you, then you don't really need to be. Yes. If you want to be just to make sure, that's fine. But, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, just make sure you're, you're good before you get that test. Because once that test comes back... It's like this is like the it's, diagnostic it's of your car. This yeah. is like what we're gonna do. So yeah, it's you know it's 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 on record, right? At that point, yeah. once you do a blood test, it is on record. Not with the insurance companies and stuff like that because we don't use them, but it is on record with LabCorp. So I mean, anybody can pull those records per se if there was a situation where it was subpoenaed. I mean, those records are able to get subpoenaed. So just be careful what you're doing, right? Um, that's all I can say. Uh, big shot, Freedom Light said, "Tight medical team are definitely the best." Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, Lee, Lee and doctor and doctors, how you doing? Arcus, what's going on? Big shout out to Dan Wheeler for buying a badge. I appreciate you every time, bro. Dan Thank Wheeler you. with the tight and strong tattoo. He, he does tight and strong tattoo, you that's for sure. Know, Dan Wheeler has a big, that's a right. tight and strong with the logo, right? A real tattoo. That, a real so, tattoo, hey, that's right. He's, he's doing the tight and soldiers out there yeah. for sure. That's hardcore, um, I love it. Hardcore love for it. sure, I love it, I love it. All right, how much is TRT and HCG? All right, so TRT... So when you do TRT, Jesse, with us, or hormone, I just like to call it hormone replacement therapy. The reason is because we're balancing multiple hormones. We're not just balancing testosterone. Obviously, we want to replace it if it's lower deficient and optimize it, but that's just one part. We need to make sure that the estrogen is balanced too as well, and you would probably go on an estrogen blocker. So an astrazole or Remedex is what it's commonly prescribed. After that, you're going to have some gonadal support. Now, what does that mean? That means that we need something that's going to back up your testicles to make sure they're not shrinking and becoming little baby prunes, right? Yeah. And having low semen production and just not feeling your best, right? Not optimal. So you can pick from a different things. We do offer gonadarellum with the package automatically or a kispeptin um, or in clomiphene. Now, HCG, 
Now, ATG is not being able to be compounded anymore, so it's a manufactured product, so it is a little bit more expensive. You're looking at ATG to being probably about 300 bucks for a 10,000 IU vial. Uh, that will last you between one to two months with your TRT. So in total, I mean, I'd have to do what the, the cost would be with the ATG add on, but if you didn't have the ATG and let's say it was just testosterone clomiphene. Yeah. and clomiphene, your nashazole, your syringes, shipping, medical review, everything out the door. If you're out of state, it's 375 for everything. There's no other hidden costs or nothing else, and that's everything that you need to be you know, successful on your month of therapies with us. If you wanted to go with the ATG route instead of the enclomiphene, it would be a little bit more money, right? So at that point, we can figure that in for you. If you want more information on that, just call or text us at 727-389-3220, and the girls and the staff will be happy to help you out. Now, in terms of people, uh, people hearing you say ACG or clomiphene. Now, what are the benefits if they don't if they if they don't want to spend with the ACG? Yeah, can yeah. they get the enclomiphene? Is going to do the same thing? Clomiphene, or is yeah. it something where ACG is the best thing? No, I mean honestly, you know, I, no. Listen, ATG was the most commonly used thing for ad back support for gonadal support before the band as far as compounding goes. Mm. Um, and clomiphene wasn't really used that much. Clomiphene was. But clomid, yeah, that's what you guys always say, clomid. Clomid has yeah. horrible negative side effects. Your eyes for, go back. Yeah. Your vision go for a percentage of the population, it can cause depression and dark dark thoughts. Um, it can cause dizziness, like Drew said, or blurred vision. Um, there's some other things. So you're saying, what's the difference between enclomiphene and enclomiphene? Because it, they sound really from, like close, right? Mm. It's a molecular difference, right? A molecular difference. And at that point, it does not have those negative side effects. And I take enclomiphene today. And I yeah. took ATG for 10 years before this, I think. I took enclomiphene first thing so, in the morning with my MK677. You know, <laughs> so, uh, you know, for the ATG purposes, now, enclomiphene, you know, on paper and everything like that is, is supposed to work better. As far as really igniting LH or FSH or, or stimulating and making sure that your your testicles don't shrink and semen production is at a good volume. And for patients that don't do or cannot do hormone replacement therapy with testosterone, um, we put or a natural version per se for like a 21 year old, they go on enclomiphene and it raises up their testosterone to a good amount. I would say I've seen people up to 700 with that coming from maybe like a 400. So three to 400 points difference. Now ACG. One benefit, too, to taking the enclomiphene is it's a capsule where ACG is yes. injectable. Yes. So not only is it easier to take, you can just literally just throw it in your mouth with some water or yeah. food or whatever. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to. And another thing, too, is benefit to enclomiphene is you don't have to compound it. ACG right. comes, it used to come in, a, you know, you have the bacteriostatic water, and then you have the yeah. powder liquid. You have to put it together. Oh, you have yeah. to compound it. You have to wait. Then you have to put it in your fridge, and you have to wait. You have to store it in your fridge. So if yeah. you're traveling... It can get damaged. You're not supposed to shake the vial. It can get yeah. damaged. And clomiphene, you could throw that in your gym bag. It can yeah. be bouncing around. It can be whatever. You can it's do. true. If you need to travel, it's a lot easier to travel with it. So that it's is true. one benefit. It's a lot easier to take. And it doesn't get damaged. It's true. It's cheaper. And, you know, it's, usually, <laughs> it's all around. I love it better. The other thing is, is that... Um, like Drew said, I mean, that is a big, great point, right? You can you don't have to travel with it, keep it cold. It doesn't get damaged. Yeah, doesn't I know, damage. I've heard a lot of stories about ACG getting damaged. Of course. I forgot to put it in the fridge, it was left in the car. Yeah. You know, or, or well, I, I mean, forgot to put it back in the fridge, it was left in the counter, and I went to work all day. So. I, I do know a lot of patients, because, yeah. you know, I've been doing this for over a decade. You know, calls in for patients and say, like, hey, I took out my ACG uh, and I had it on the counter and I knocked it over and I broke it. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I feel bad for patients when they say it. So what I would do is I would, I would like split the cost with them. Mm -hmm. I'd eat the money and be like, hey, listen, I just want to make sure you're getting your treatment right. Because, yeah. I mean, I know it's more money out of your pocket and stuff like that. So, you know, that is one thing that happens with ATG. Uh, ATG, you know, can stimulate testosterone levels too as well. It, but it mimics the LH. It doesn't really kick it on or, or ignite it. So mm -hmm. that's the difference between the two. Um, I know a lot of people like ACG weight loss, anything like that. It's all about a caloric deficit. Mm -hmm. And there's better things now, for sure, 100%, than ACG. They're going to help you out with that. Um, but fertility protocols and stuff like that can still call for ACG. So it's really um, up to you guys what you guys want to do. It's a preference. And then a financial decision, too. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, if you guys are two people out there trying to have a baby, they have, they've tried everything, they've, you know, especially if his guy's a bodybuilder and his hormones have been off and this and that. Mm -hmm. I know uh, so many people that as soon as they start taking ACG or yeah. clomiphene, oh, my yeah. wife's pregnant now. I didn't even yeah. know she could get pregnant. Oh, yeah. We've been having unprotected sex for two years. And oh, I, yeah. I didn't think she'd get pregnant. Oh, yeah. Next thing you know, ACG and clomiphene, she's pregnant. So that's, <laughs> yeah, so that's one thing you have to be careful for, but it's also a benefit, too. Yeah. If you guys have been trying to have kids, and yeah. you're like, man, we've tried everything, you know. Yeah. We thought it was his diet. We thought it was this. We thought it was that. You know, you never it's, know. Taking it's, clomiphene yeah. and that super sperm. Yeah, the the myth <laughs> the, the myth of 
if I take testosterone, yeah, I'm not going to get. I'm going to. I'm going to be birth control. Yeah, it's right. no, it's not. It's not. That is the stupidest thing somebody yeah. could say out there. And whoever made that damn thing up, yeah. they're an idiot, yeah. right? Because they're very uneducated what they're talking about. Or I know guys that will literally take things specifically that they know to destroys try to the cast testosterone, fertilize them. just so they don't have to go get an vasectomy. <laughs> Oh my god! But yeah, god. let me take, and then they have other problems too. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't want to do that. I mean, listen, you know, it, listen. If you're gonna have unprotected sex, it is what it is. You better have yeah. be great at the pullout method no. or whatever you're doing there, or have them do something. I don't know what to say. But now this is kind of off thing. Is birth control something that we offer for females? So we don't do birth control. Okay. That's more of an OBGYN okay. type situation. Um, you know, in birth control, when you do calling it, if you're a female. Um, we need to know that too because birth control can affect some hormones. Different birth controls affect different things, right? Some are hormone-based, some are not hormone-based, so we need to know that information. So when we look at your blood work, because a male, it's real simple and easy. Reference range, we know where it's at. Yeah, so, that's why it's cheaper than female blood work too. I mean, we you do know, a lot more testing yeah, for females. Yeah, there's more testing, but when you look at a female's panel, when you look at testosterone and estradiol and total estrogens and progesterone, it just doesn't have a reference range. Like, if you're within this range, you're normal, right? Mm -hmm. It has the follicular phases. So, mm -hmm. during ovulation, yeah. menopause. I mean, it has everything. So, you have to exactly say where you're at in your cycle. So, we have to know. If you don't have a cycle, then we can go off that. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of where it's at. And it'll kind of tell you in those ranges. So, it's like three or four different spots where yeah, you can yeah. really, just depending on who it is. So it's different. It's definitely different. But that's what we're here for. And that's what our medical providers are great at is balancing people's hormones and getting them to feel better. I like the, I like the name. If someone said, you go, bro, I like the name. You go, bro. Yeah. So <laughs> you, I'm 23 with 500 yeah. NG slash DL. Can I get treated? Um, just like what we said, you yeah. might not even need HRT. You might just be yeah. holding clomiphene. Yeah. People that age taking clomiphene, their levels go up. So yeah. I would suggest getting your blood work done first. See where yeah. you're at. I mean, you say you've gotten 500. How recent is that? And what um, lab was that from, yeah. too? Because that would make a difference, right? So LabCorp is 216 to 964. But when we talk about Quest, I think it's like 364 to 1150, I believe. So mm -hmm. it is a little bit higher. So those reference ranges are higher. So, you know, on LabCorp, you're right on that borderline mm -hmm. for somebody to get treated. I'll be honest with you. 500 is like right there. Yeah. Um, now, if it was Quest... That's a little bit lower now. Now we're talking yeah. about somebody that could possibly be treated. So, you know, it really depends on the person. Everybody's different. Um, now we would want to get some more information from you. Where was your free testosterone at? Was that low? Was that high? Where mm. was that at? Um, and some different things from you. So we can definitely, we could possibly treat you. I'm not going to say we can't. But that's going to be up to the medical staff and providers, too, as well, to look at with your medical history. Yeah, only one way to call. Just one way to find out. Just call the number yeah. see what we could do for you. But 500, I mean, that... I'm not a medical provider, but yeah. I would assume that anybody with a test level there is, is a little bit low. Yeah, we, um, we, we can definitely so we could probably work with you. But again, I would just treated people I'm not a medical provider, so yeah. I don't yeah. talk to them, let yeah. them decide. Yeah, they, they make yeah. the final decision, but usually 500 milligrams yeah. or 500 nanograms uh, per deal, that's going to be able to be treated. All right, so you shouldn't have an issue with that. All right. Uh, YG Lee 74 yeah. says, I want to be like Big Drew. I Who love it. Who doesn't? I like it. I like it. <laughs> Um, all right, so Road Dog said, what does your testosterone cost with estrogen blockers a month, and what testosterone do you sell? So when you go on hormone replacement therapy with us, you're going to go on three different things. And there's no, like, questioning it or, you know, like, negotiating it. It is what it is. So you're going to go on testosterone, estrogen blockers, gonadal support, which is probably going to be in clomiphene. Your needles, syringes, that could be optional to you. I don't care about that. But the medications, the providers, and the protocol, they're not bending on that. That is what it is because we do not want anybody to get any negative symptoms or possible side effects. So we can make sure that we do this by prescribing the protocol and having the patient take the protocol. So at that point, those three together, needle syringes if you get them, testosterone, estrogen blockers, and clomiphene shipping medical review, um, 350 in-state, 375 out-of-state. That's for everything all at the door. Um, testosterone. What testosterone do we offer? So we offer every kind of different ester you could possibly think of. So we offer cypionate, which is the most commonly prescribed one, and anthate, propionate, 
and we have blends. So we have cypionate and propionate together. We also have a tri-blend that has all three together. So we offer those. We offer also offer testosterones and different oils. Um, so if one doesn't work for you, like grapeseed oil, then we have like MCT oil and stuff like that too as well. We also so, have testosterone trophies too. They're a little, oh yeah, a little bit less doses. A lot of the women, women, excuse me, women that are sublingual. Women, yeah, sub, sublingual. I thought you said sublingual because I said women, women, women. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, a lot of the women are, uh, usually that's usually the route they'll have to go because uh, obviously an yeah. injection of. Yeah. 100 milligrams of testosterone ship is yeah. way too much for a woman. Yeah. So uh, we yeah. do have trophies too as well. Yeah, so we offer sublingual creams, all that stuff. And now for females. Now, obviously an injectable is going to be, usually it's going to have a higher dose. And it's going to be very effective, very fast. And they're going to absorb a lot of what they inject. So with that, we do have injectable testosterone for females. We don't really like to put it on it. And we do have a smaller version of it per dose wise. Mm. So I think we have vials that are like 20, 20 milligrams per ml. And we have them take like... 0.2, 0.3, yeah. so it's like right. very minimal. So you're taking like maybe five milligrams um, as a female, and that's probably the tops. And that's a lot, though. That's a lot. I not mean, a lot where it's going to cause any problems. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying that's a higher end of, you know, female. Yeah. It's not like me taking five, yes. five milligrams. I wouldn't even, that's yes. nothing. Yeah, so, um, all right, so YG Lee said, does that weight loss drug have to be mixed? Are you talking about semi-glutide? Um, the next one that's coming out is Cheers of Peptide. That's getting launched next week. Um, by me. I'm going to do a video on it next week, but we've already been prescribing that drug to a lot of patients, and it's better than semi-glutide, if you can believe that. That's like crazy, because semi-glutide is such yeah. an effective drug. Everybody's on that. Everybody's on Everybody's semi-glutide, on but it now... It doesn't matter what size you are, too. You could be... Yeah. You don't necessarily have to be, like, obese or big. You, you just, I mean, you could be already in shape and just want to just lose more weight. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It works it, good. Yeah, it works on anybody yeah. and everybody. And A friend of mine just ordered some, and he's like 6'8", 300 pounds, so... And he's fairly athletic, so I mean, if <laughs> I want to know how he's doing, yeah, yeah, he's. <laughs> I talked to him because I, I gave what I did was he, he said he got the garlic pills too. He's like, oh, I'm not even nauseous anymore. That's what he said yes. He's like, oh, I said he should have had them like, to begin no. with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I told yeah, him. Yeah, yeah I, I hooked yeah. him up. I made sure I took yeah. care of him. But anyways, all way, all all different sizes. If you want to yeah. take it, you could be a bodybuilder. Yeah. You could be a soccer mom. You could yeah. be a, a stay at home mom. Stay at home yeah. dad doesn't matter. But like, stuff works. It's like no excuse anymore. No excuse. None. None at all. Uh, what's up, Seth Jordan? How you doing, man? Hey, listen. I like that the video you did today. It was talking about the Liver King. The Liver King, I guess. It, and I don't follow the Liver King, so I don't. I don't <laughs> watch his King. updates. I haven't I heard can, of him in weeks. I could care less about yeah. the Liver King, but. Um, but it was kind of crazy because I guess he's going like, I'm 30 days out natty now, right? And he's giving <laughs> progress picks. Yeah. And so Jordan was like, well, who cares about your progress picks? Yeah. And that, that's a good point, right? And then says like, hey, listen, why don't you start coming with some blood work? That would tell the truth of what's yeah. going on. You know, if his 1,500 plus or whatever it is, yeah. we know he ain't off the sauce, right? Yeah. But if it's like 300, yeah. then we know he's off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, mean, I want to see some blood work on this guy. I yeah, mean, because the, that whole, yeah, that doesn't make sense. It's almost like you're proving that you're not taking it just so you could take it. Right. It's right. weird. Like, or he's getting sued by the, he's getting sued by all kinds of people now. The FTC is going to start looking to Liver King because of, you can't say, hey, listen, I got like this here and this is how I took these products. And people are thinking, oh, that's how you did it, and that's why they're ordering products. I don't know. If, if, they're, if they could sue the Liver King over that, that means everybody. I mean, it's opening up for everybody. These Instagram male, female trainers that I'm all natural, and all they do is they have good genetics. Yep. So they could probably eat like yep. crap and still look that way. Yeah. And then they take illegal steroids to make their body look a certain And yep. they promote natural, 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 get yep. my plan. Yep, yep, yep. So that's like everybody. I don't know why they single him out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's like even infomercials. Look, I took this weight loss drug and lost 30 pounds in 30 days. It's yeah. like, you know, all this fake stuff. Yeah. The only weight loss drug that does that is semi-glutide. Yeah, yeah. Or tears of peptides coming out. Yeah. Um, you but we do have AOD 9604, too. If you guys one. have been hearing about weight loss drugs, yeah. a lot of these weight loss drugs are injectable. AOD 9604, that was like... It's kind of like, I'm not going to say it's fallen off, but semi-glutide just kind of took over. Yeah. It just, AOD 9604 is a capsule, too, so you could just take that, you know, first well, thing we have an injectable, Or you could do an injectable, yeah. Sublingual, capsule. Yeah. I mean, so you can do that. I mean, listen, AOD 9604 is an awesome drug. It's yeah. an awesome peptide. It's it's a natural thing. It's 176 amino acid sequence. It burns fat. Like, literally burns fat. That's doesn't, what it does. doesn't just make you not eat. Another, it literally melts the fat. That's so. what it does. Um, you know, it, lipolysis is one function of it, and then lipogenesis is the other function of it. So what does that mean? So like Drew said, it starts using the fat that's stored, right? That's one part. And then the foods that come in that are going to store as fat, it doesn't store as fat. It uses that as energy. 
So it's really, really cool. It's a great weight loss drug, and you can take it along with these other ones. I know some people out here, like the Real Hokey Pride, who's been taking both at the yeah. same time and getting great results. Mm -hmm. So it'll, it'll do two different functions, and it works two different ways. So that's pretty cool. And YG Lee said, it is true that it can cause up to 35 pounds in 12 weeks. And I've definitely seen a lot of patients. Yeah, depending on what the person weighs, the more they weigh, the more they lose. So, I mean. You know, it's definitely there. So, at that point, you know, people are going to be able to lose weight one way or the other. Yeah. And the I, other would, I would I would, probably lose more than 35 if I were to take that for 12 weeks. Oh, for sure. Percentage of my body weight, I'm about 280 or whatever right now. So, I mean, yeah, I would definitely lose. <laughs> Dude, you if I combine diet and exercise, I guarantee I could probably drop fifty pounds in twelve weeks without even trying to take. I bet. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it would be, it would be, uh, it would be kind of crazy, right? Because I'd take the big out of my name, and just be Drew. We could just go two twelve. <laughs> Let's go two twelve Olympia, amateur <laughs> Olympia. <laughs> It'll be, it used to be Big Drew six one six. Now it's Drew two twelve. <laughs> But you got a six foot three guy competing at two twelve. <laughs> <laughs> two twelve guys are. Let's use the short yeah. guys, right? You'd be towering over them. Oh man! All right, so let's get into the next one until we get the next question. All right, so the next one is Amazon expands pay with your palm technology. Yeah, it's getting crazy. Pretty. I mean, I don't know. It used to be everything's cash and the card. And now you can pay with your phone. Now you can pay with your watch. Now it's like literally your hand, like your physical yeah. thing. So. Yeah. I don't know if I like this. No. I like the convenience of it, yeah. but if they if you could scan your hand, they can get all your information, and that means your hand is always on you. Yep. A lot of people walk with open hands. They don't close their fists. Right. So if you walk through a door with your hand open, they could just like what we were talking about before the show, they could track where you're going. They could I don't like that. It's of like course. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like, like it. Either. It's not even like they had to implant something into you first. It's like yeah. from you. Yeah. So I'm not sure if you guys could see the screen, but basically, you, I, when you pay, you put your put your card into like a device, looks almost like mm -hmm. a um, you know like that you'd pay with a credit card. Mm -hmm. Once you put your your card in, you hold your hand, it scans your hand, and mm -hmm. then now everything from a scanned your hand is into that card is on your hand. Wow. So once everything's in place, now you literally just go into the store and beep beep beep, go to the grocery store, and you just beep and pay. Wow. And they have it at Whole Foods because, like John said, Whole Foods it's is owned by Amazon. Amazon. So I I assume this is going to be everywhere. When Apple Pay first came out, I think it was only you could only use it with Apple. Now it's everywhere. Yeah. They have Android Pay for people, Android people. But yep. I don't like this palm of your hand thing. It's just like it's <laughs> that. Can, it's crazy. Like, think about it. if I have palm. If I if I walk through a doorway or anywhere and it scans my hand, they know that I'm there. Now I could get an email to my phone saying. Uh, pizza's on sale because I'm in front of a pizza place. Yeah. It's bad enough that you could talk to your talk around. Like me, me and John talk about Air Jordans. Yep. Next thing you know, I go on my iPad and it's Air yeah. Jordans. Yeah, it's true. So now it's like not only is it audio, everything. audio, now even without the audio, they're going to know. So yeah. even if you're quiet walking around, I don't want them listening. Your yeah. hand. Yeah. Everyone's going to be walking around like this. Yeah. <laughs> put, your hands, hey, put your hands in your pocket and you walk through the door. Right? You have you some know. gloves and stuff <laughs> on. I mean, you see, kids, see, if someone walks into the store, uh, to steal from the store, we found out this stuff was missing. Now can they go back because your hand was gone in? They could Scan look at it. everything. They so could they probably could, see who came in, who came they out, see who came in, see who came out, what time their hand went through the door and scanned. So it's like uh, I think it will help with crime. Yeah, but privacy is out the door. So they used to have the, the exact same technology that would track you like this through your Bluetooth and the phones, and there was already eyes and it would scan like different phones that would walk in. That's why people would know when you walk by and the whole nine. But even if I'm completely naked and I'm on a deserted island, oh, no, they, they the could palm. still scan. Yeah, the palm. No, I, listen, anything that's uh, biometrical that's scanning, whether it's your face, your eye, your finger, your palm. Yeah. I and mean, even for Peter, I would tell him like when you go into Disney or all the theme parks, you got to put your finger on it and, it and it goes with your card. Peter don't do that. You don't have to. <laughs> yeah, As a minor, 18 years old, they make yeah, you do it. Do but it. It's messed up all the they way They try around. to get him to do it. I remember yeah. one time they tried to get him to do it, and you were like, nah. No. He was no. like, I'm going to do it. you got to know the rules, man. Yeah, 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 they'll yeah. try to get you into it. Um, YG Lee, yes. If you have a small pod belly, semi-glutide or tourism peptide will knock it out. And I would say 12 weeks. I'm not going to say you're going to lose a pot belly in three weeks. but Real quick, is your pot belly, is it only your stomach where it's distended and bloated, or is it your whole body that has you know higher body fat? If it's mm -hmm. just your stomach... It might be something with the food you ate. We do food allergy True tests that. here. True so that. if you get your food allergy test, now you know that the food going into is the right food. Because yep. for me, if I have a lot of chicken, my stomach's out to here. Yep. It's bloated. Yep. It's just it, my stomach doesn't agree with it. So yep. that might be a situation too. Um, so George said, what do you guys think about those testosterone pellets? No. They suck. They suck because... They suck. We There's a famous basketball player that you guys have known. If you guys play NBA Jam back in the day, 
you know, me and John the Orlando Wright, Magic. Yeah, he played for the Orlando Magic. You can do the, you can do the math. He great three point shooter. Not yeah. Dennis Scott. I mean, you could do the math. Yeah. But um, yeah, he uh, we spoke with him in Orlando. Was it last year? Yep. That's and what he was speak. saying that he did the pellets, and it was just horrible. Terrible. It's horrible. We have spoke to some other people that said they did the pellets because what happens is they just put a pellet inside of you, and it's just supposed to dissolve. Yep. But everyone dissolves differently. That's right. The absorbency. So every single person I've heard get a pellet has like a huge knot on their glute. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, listen, pellet therapy, it sucks. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because males and females, it's, it's, a, it's a crappy way for transportation as far as the medication and some of the side effects that come along with it. So let's just start breaking it down, right? It sounds great in theory. Because when you get a pellet, you go in, you get it inserted, and you have it in there for three months. There's no putting on a cream. There's no eating a sublingual trochee. There's no injecting. There's none of that. So that's that's good for the person out there that, you know, they're not like us. We're, we're human uh, pin cushions, right? It's we don't good care to your about blood's anything. going like this the whole well, time. So, but normal people don't know that. They're like, yeah, oh, yeah. cool, I got I got what yeah. this doctor told me I should get. I'm going to feel better, and this is what it is. Yeah. So the next thing that happens is, true said, the absorption rate for everybody is different. Some people might absorb faster or some might absorb slower, but this dose is already in there. So what does that mean? You're along for the ride no matter what. For those three months, you're going to do what that pellet says because it's already in your body and absorbing. So for guys and girls, usually testosterone goes to the top, right? And then it starts working its way down through the months. So at the end of the two months or right in the middle, you're not feeling as good as when you started, mm. right? Now, if your estrogen is through the roof as a guy, you're getting water retention, irritability, and then if it's on for a long time, gonococcia possibly. Females, if your testosterone stays high, and they like it in the beginning because it boosts your sex drive, your energy, yeah, yeah. like they're not getting facial hair the next day. they are not getting clitoral enlargement the next day or a deepened voice. This happens over time. But their levels are so spiked that they feel like a million bucks, but they have no idea that staying on this dose for a long extended period of time is gonna give them those negative side effects. Yeah. So it's a problem, right? And we, I don't know how many people that we've corrected their hormones coming from pellet therapy over into this. The best thing about doing any other therapy except for pellet therapy is that you can change the dose at any given point. If it's an injection, the next week you can change it. And it's out of your system a lot quicker too. If you take Real it, quick. If, well, someone asked earlier about the different types of testosterone. If you Three take weeks. a testosterone Three propionate, weeks. which is a fast ester, yeah. and ester just means you know the half-life, how long it's in your body. Yeah. If you take a propionate ester and you take a testosterone shot on a Monday, I mean Friday, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you have any issues with that Monday shot by Friday, you could go yeah. a different route. Absolutely. With that pellet, if you have an issue, they're not going to surgically go in there and take the pellet out. No. It's never happened. No. It would cause too much scar tissue and it would be like a mess. But I'll tell you what has yeah. happened, pellets popping out. Oh, that's not I don't know how many times I've had popping patients out? pop out. Or just and they have to go back in the office to get reinserted. So it comes out. Yes. What, what are they using, a 12-gauge needle to put it in there? Like no, what? what they do is they, they cut like a like a little line, mm -hmm. right? And then they get like these like tweezers type thing. Mm -hmm. And they have these pellets. And the pellets are like white. They're like that small. Mm -hmm. Literally that small. They grab it and then they insert it in you. And then, you know. How far into the muscle does it go before it can come back out? I mean, it's got to go. It's got like an inch or two. Or, it, yeah. it's, it's, not, it's not far, but it's like part of about, yeah, about, about I, an that's inch. Pretty, it comes out. Two. Nice. But I've had them pop out for people. So at that point, you know, you got to, it's not worth it. It's yeah. just not worth it. Um, and, you know, what you're paying for it, I mean, you know, it might be a little bit cheaper or a little bit more. It just depends on where you go. Mm. But like I said, if you need to change things, like let's say if your estrogen is too high as a guy, you know, what are you going to do? They're going to make you take it in ash saw anyway. So now you're taking the pill anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah. For girls, I mean, if your testosterone is too high, they usually put you on spirolactone, and that kills testosterone levels. Just mm. kills them. Um, so, you know, you just got you got to be careful about it. And testosterone pellets are definitely not the way out there. It's a big money market thing for doctors, and it's easy because insert, go, insert, go. Yeah, kind of like you cattle. Don't, you don't have to do injections. I'm like, yeah, well. Yeah, you don't have to do injections. <laughs> yeah, but they don't explain all the negative things that could possibly yeah. happen, and that's the problem. They should, they should give you the benefits, and, yeah, you can have all the benefits of a replacement, mm -hmm. but then they should give you the negative things or possible things that could happen. Yeah. Anybody uh, out there who's tried pellets and yeah. then converted to... An injection or even a trophy. Yeah. Let let us know. I want to know the difference. Absolutely. A lot of times people do pellets and they've only done pellets because it's the first time they've done HRT. So yep. they're like, oh yeah, they said get this. It's kind of like someone goes to a mechanic. They don't know anything about the car. Right. Yeah, you need this. Right. So they go in. Yeah, this is the pellets. It's easier. And then the person says, oh, I heard about the injections. Oh no, all we do is put this in you. No injections. 
no needles, no anything like that. And then, but mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I want to know someone who's. I've never heard of someone switching to the pellets. Yeah. I, I've like, I have yet to heard of someone say, yeah, I was taking the injections and I wanted to go with the pellets. I've never heard that. But I've heard horror stories from yeah. pellets. Oh, yeah. When people come back, they're like, wow, man. And then once the pellets, like, out of them are fully dissolved, that's when you hear how bad it was. Because yeah. they don't want to tell you how bad it is because they're still experiencing it. Of course. It's like, oh, man, my, I had a knot in my glue and I yeah. could barely even walk. And, you know. Now, listen, I've had plenty of patients here. Um, take injectable testosterone, and they just don't like injecting. I understand that. They don't like sticking themselves in the needle. I understand that. So they went to the other route. They went and said, listen, I'm going to go try pellets. I said, please do. I want you to experience that. And then you let me know what's better. And they always come back. They go on it for a couple months and like, oh, this is good. Everything worked out great. And then they start, oh, uh, yeah, I'm experiencing these different symptoms. Well, then they start realizing. And then when they get their blood work done, when they're on the pellets, then they can see black and white what's going on, on the inside. And if you guys are on pellets, I, I'm telling you guys, do that. Get blood work done. Yeah, I'm interested about the blood work on you. pellets too. Get blood I always hear horror story, but I never heard like, did it really bring you to optimal levels? Like, uh, no, how quick did it bring you to optimal? I mean, it, it'll it'll definitely boost up. It'll. I'm not gonna say that the pellets don't work. Pellets but how work. quick does it? I mean, it'll boost it up pretty quick. So within a couple mm -hmm. of days, you should be boosting up testosterone. Uh, as far as that goes, because mm -hmm. you know, remember this. They're they're not putting in. A five milligram dose or two hundred milligram dose. They're putting in like a two thousand milligram dose. That's ridiculous. Because it goes over three months. That's ridiculous. Right? Think I about know. think about us as guys. If we took two hundred milligrams per week, right? What would the dose in that vial be? Eight weeks is sixteen hundred milligrams. Right. Yeah. So I mean, at that point, if you're <laughs> three, three months. Three months. Yeah, it's literally two thousand. Yeah, it's it's a lot. So. You know, this can raise things up. And like I said, you know, it's not going to be good, and you know, halfway through because your level is going to start decreasing down. You might have Why? You, might, you might have a headache, oily skin, and be moody for three days and be horny as ever, and yeah. then go completely opposite and be like, you're I'm gonna, not horny at all. And then yep. one minute you're mad, and one, yep. up and one minute you're hot, and one minute you're cold. Yep. If you guys know how females are, yep. or females out there listening, if you guys are on your period, how you're kind of off and you're all over the place, like you don't want to have that feeling. No. Like, you never have that feeling when you go the injection oh, no. route because you're Blood levels are stable. No. If you guys are doing your HRT on a Monday, a Thursday, or whatever your doctor tells you how to take it, yeah. your blood. The reason why you do that is because it's stable. Yeah. The half life on testosterone sipinate or testosterone nante is twelve to fourteen days. So technically, you could take a shot every two weeks which I've heard other HRT places do. Now, that's going to bring your levels where they should be, but you're not going to feel right. You're going to be up and down. So yeah, that's the reason yeah. why we say take it yeah. twice a week yeah, split to dosage. feel the best, so your blood levels stay the best. Yeah. It's not just about feeling the best. If your blood levels are uh, stable, yeah. you don't have to worry about side yeah. effects. It's all about consistency. It drops and comes up. That's when you start breaking out. You start because your hormones are off. Absolutely. So keep everything in line. Yeah, keep it balanced. Uh, Jacquemois. Can CJC with Imperillin uh, affect HRT for women? No, so no. It's not going to affect HRT for women at all or guys. It's going to help with IGF-1 levels. It's a, um, a growth hormone release and hormone peptide. It has nothing to do with any of the other hormones, right? No, it's not going to affect progesterone, estradiol, prolactin, um, testosterone, or anything like that. So you're good to go there. Um, next one was, does extra body fat lower T also? So the studies have shown that if you do carry a lot more body weight, then you're probably going to have lower testosterone levels. Now, this might not be because of the body weight. This might be because of the food you're intaking, other drugs or things that are in, involved. It's more of an all-around lifestyle thing that could be affecting T levels. So they haven't said, well, if you have a whole bunch of body fat, then you're going to have low T. Because mm -hmm. I do know guys that have tested with a high amount of body fat that were pretty big that had good levels of testosterone. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't really link it to say, like, if you have a lot of body fat, that's going to happen across the board for everybody. It's just different. Extra body fat could mean high estrogen, too. Oh, so for sure. High estrogen, for um, sure. That could be strictly estrogen related. Usually, if, you have, if you're very overweight and you're young, right, mm -hmm. there's usually it's a hormonal issue. Something's been going on there. Um, obviously, if nutrition plan your whole life. Because the problem is, is, and I see it today, like there's a couple of baseball players around Peter's team. There's one in particular. Kid's really good, man. Can hit, can throw, the whole nine. But he's overweight. So overweight. Babe Ruth, baby. Right. But here's the, here's the problem. Yeah, if no. you don't hit a home run, yeah. he hits it out to, let's say, right field. Deep right field. Yeah. Get to second base. Where you should be getting to at least first base, he's getting thrown out. 
deep right field? Deep right field. Mm. That's how yeah. slow he is yeah. because that's how much overweight he is. Yeah. And then all the coaches say, hey, listen, this guy is not going to be worthless. You can't put him in position because he can't move fast enough to get to the ball. Yeah. He can hit, but you know what? He's got to get to the base before he can get some, uh, as far as a, another base runner to come in. So, yeah, yeah being overweight is just going to cause a lot of different issues down the road and then health issues too. So, yeah. you know, but my point to that was, was his parents don't help him with nutrition. He doesn't train at all. They don't get him into training. They feed him Doritos, nacho. Like, you can see what the kid eats. And you're like, well, this is why, yeah, yeah. you know, the problem is. And we've talked about this before where yeah. it's almost like a form of abuse. Oh, yeah. If the kid's too skinny, they'll take him out of the home. They, they see rib cage, they'll yeah. take the kid out of the house. But if they're if overweight. they see a kid that's 250 pounds and 10 years old, that's fine. Yeah. No, he's, he's doing good. <laughs> he's he's doing thriving good. right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not thriving. And if we say anything about him being big, we're body, you know, we're yeah. imaging and all yeah, this stuff. No, but no. you could call someone skinny all day long. Yeah. Like, that, what I don't agree with. You can call people skinny all day long, but you can't say they're big. You can't say they're fat. You can't say they're, you know. I'm going to stop that right now. Look. If you're fat, you're fat. Yeah. Do something about it. Yeah. Right? I mean, come on. The thing on. is, is if people say, why are you being mean? If someone told me, oh, you have, you're black. That's not being mean. It's the truth. Right. If someone says, like, why well, was I, it's if true. someone comes up, if someone goes up to someone else and says, hey, you're, um, I don't know, you're strong. Like, yeah. I don't know. If, yeah. If it's the truth then, and you don't like the truth, change it. Change it. Yeah. No, that's not for somebody to go shame somebody like, oh, you're fat, you're fat. You know I mean? Okay, yeah, yeah, cool. no, If you need help, I got you. Right, right, you know, right. No problem. I'm not going to, yeah. I'm not going to, you know. And we should, um, you know, we should encourage people if we see them in the gym. And you are, like Drew does all the time. If he sees somebody and they're putting in good effort and stuff like that, he'll go up and support them. Which is great, man, because at that point, a lot, a lot of people support those people in the gym. They make fun of them. They take pictures of them, um, which makes those people not want to come in. You know, they got they're insecure about being in the gym anyway, possibly. So go up and support them and help them out. I mean, yeah, it makes a huge that. difference. You don't realize like sometimes if I do that, I'll see a guy. You know, he's maybe be out of shape. You can tell he's just getting into the gym. He's, he doesn't know how to use the work yeah. the machines and stuff. Yeah. If I say something to him, you know, as him starting up, man, you got great shoulders. Now, in the back of his mind every day, oh, oh you got great shoulders. So yeah. he just, you know, he can just, he feels great off of it. It's just, I don't know. Like, you there's, gotta, you gotta, um, there's a special feeling. I don't like, I don't like that. people that are uh, attention. Like if I see a girl with a fake butt and little waist and fake chest and Makeup everywhere and fifty million followers and bent over doing squats. Yeah. I'm, I'm not even looking in her direction, like yeah. at all. Like yeah. you, you get enough attention, right? I'd rather give this guy attention over here. That's like you know, completely out of shape. Yep, doesn't have new workout clothes on. Yep, chilling by himself. You know, it kind of embarrassed to be there. Whatever. You know, that's, those are the people you need to touch. The yep. other people, they get plenty of attention. Social media gives these women plenty of attention. We don't need to give them any more. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. There's other people that need the support and attention more, probably for sure. Uh, Trevino, 12D. How many how many testosterone tests does one need to be issued a regimen of traditional TRT? One. One. That's it. It only takes one. Now, when you go to like a general practitioner or you want to use your insurance somewhere, you're going to have to take at least two. And they want two clinically deficient tests. That means you're underneath the reference range. So if it's 264 to 916, if you're at 264, you're still normal. If you're at 263, then you're clinically deficient, and they want an AM test for both of them because AM shows your highest reading of testosterone. And the problem with that is, is that the testosterone levels start declining throughout the day. So when you get to, you know, 5, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, you're really tired, and when you get home, you probably pass out on the couch or chair or wherever you're at because mm -hmm. you're that wore out. So at that point, it only takes one through us. Um, if you're going to anybody else, like I said, traditional general practitioners and insurance wants to to cover it. Mm -hmm. um, so at that point, and they might not cover injections. Different insurance companies cover different things, right? So, you know, you have to check with your insurance carrier or just don't worry about them. Just come to Titan and we'll take care of you guys. Yeah. That's the best way for sure. All right. So next one. Only fans said that try to stop Andrew Tate from making money. They're trying to stop him from everything. Oh, man. It seems like every time someone gets in a position where they speak out about, like, I mean, look at Dr. Sebi, look at Kevin yeah. Samuels. Yeah. They're no longer here. Yeah. And then now Andrew Tate, like, yeah. what's going on? Man? Yeah. You know, a lot of people might not like Andrew Tate, and that's okay. There's a lot of women out there that don't agree with what Andrew Tate says. And I don't agree with every single thing that Andrew Tate says. But I do stand up for what Andrew Tate stands up for, too, as well. And that's masculinity. And, you know, we do need masculinity in our population. We need to be masculine males out there. We need to provide and take care of our families. Um, all the other stuff is just, it's a personal opinion of his. That's that's fine. But he's sitting in Romania right now, and they don't have formal charges against this guy. 
You know, they, they don't have anything on them, but you know what? You're in Romania, and you know, <laughs> they do what they want over there. So they got them in there right now. And this article is basically about OnlyFans. And OnlyFans basically said that they've never paid Andrew Tate a dime. They've actually kept him off the site, right? He's never been a creator on the site. And I don't know how OnlyFans works on the back end because I don't, I'm not a creator on OnlyFans, so I have no idea. But he's not got one payment from them. Now, there's been girls, I guess, that they're alleging that he's been getting money from them, tens of thousands of dollars. Um, you know, there's all different types of things out there and accu accusations against this guy. Um, and at that point, we'll see what happens and if they're going to let him out anytime soon because he's been in there since December 29th, I believe. Yeah, all that all so that foreign it's, it's, jail, especially with the whole Britney Griner thing, it took so long sucks, for that to get cleared dude. up. Like, And yeah. plus, the thing with Britney Griner is just like, okay, she didn't have a lot of people that like... I mean, Andrew Tate has a lot of women that, like, as soon as they hear his name, they're like, oh, oh Andrew Tate. Yes. But they don't even actually listen to what he said. No. They may hear one thing, yeah. all women are, whatever, and then they yeah. just tune him out. But they don't actually yeah. listen to, like, everything he's saying. So, yeah. I don't yeah. know, man. I hope, I'll, I hope he gets out. I, I hope mean, he gets you know, out, Him yeah. and his brother. His brother is stuck in there, and I know that they're supposedly human trafficking, and they had girls that they forced into doing, you know, OnlyFans and TikTok videos is what it said. But were they being compensated in some way, shape, or form? Who knows? Um, we'll see. I'm sure there's going to be more information about this. Just want to bring they, this up. And how are they being forced? I mean, what is he? Phys how is he? Phys a lot of times we they, hear that word forced. They said he no did the, the lover boy method. That's what they call it. The lover boy method is supposed to woo the female yeah. into the dream that she's going to become out of this stupendous. If a woman or man is <laughs> dumb enough to be like that, then right. that shouldn't be a crime. No. People do that every day. Guy goes yeah. on the street and lies to a girl and says whatever she yeah, wants. Yeah, just to, to hear. sleep with him, whatever. Yeah, right? all the time. So, I, no, it's I mean, this happens every single day. With a guy in my Where's the crime? It's like his brother in the video where they're walking out. His brother's like, name the charges against me. Name one charge. Yeah. They don't have any. They don't have any charges against me. Just don't like them. They're alleged charges yeah. right now. So, you know, at this point, uh, hey, listen, Andrew Tate. All I could say is, you know, I would probably get to the America. I would probably get to America as fast as hell, yeah. and have somebody else looking over business affairs in foreign regions where they can hold you up like this if you ever get out. Hopefully, it does. Yeah. Um, let's see the next one. Uh, warning, all right, YG Lee said, I, I think I'm over thirty percent body fat, which is a bad thing. Absolutely. How tall are you, YG? And how much do you weigh, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, yeah, that would definitely help us out a little bit. Have you ever had a BMI test, too, as well, that will tell you where you kind of stand there? Even though BMI is probably not the best method, but it will tell you a little bit, I guess. Um, while we're waiting, $134 million deal, UPS, FedEx partner, airline agrees to buy 20 pilotless cargo planes. More tech stuff. It's like every week I have something about tech. But, yeah, pretty much planes yeah. that don't need people in them to fly. Yeah. So we're going to have air traffic, you know, mm -hmm. robots in the air, robots on the ground, yeah. everywhere. I mean, it's gonna people are going to lo lose their job left yeah. and right. Yeah. Um, they already have the you know systems in place, and like Wendy's and Burger King, the oh, balance yeah. already have that. Now the air, too. So Automation, With maybe. this pilot, pilotless cargo, I wonder if it's going to turn into pilotless planes for people. Like in other words, is it going to get to a point where I could just jump on a plane that says that's just, you know, pilotless plane? Yeah. And shipping people now. Yeah. Now they're doing it with the cargo. Mm -hmm. Are they going to do it with people? I could see that. So I mean, I mean, and, and what happens if that plane crashes with those people in it? Obviously, the airlines because there's no pilot. The airlines responsible. Yeah. But they're going to use the whole thing that the lady did in the casino a couple weeks back. Oh, it was a malfunction. malfunction. Oh well. <laughs> You know, you yeah. can't penalize a plane, but you can penalize a human. Yeah, you can. Mistakes on an what are you gonna do? Yeah, what are you gonna do? Uh, <laughs> human error is way more. So, uh, you know where I could I could definitely see this. This is kind of crazy when you start thinking. And I I was flying last week, so this is kind of why I was reading up on the articles. But if you read the articles now about pilots that are flying around the United States, they take EKGs, and everybody's EKG as a pilot is out of range. Mm. That means that there's something going on. With their cardiovascular health, like the elevation, arrhythmias, it's elevated, crazy. No, so, from the elevation, though. I mean, no, no. So th every every pilot before the pandemic was in normal range. Mm -hmm. After the pandemic, and they've caught, they've got the. I ain't gonna say it. Yeah. It's raised everybody's EKG, so they've raised up where the normal standard was before to hire just for pilots. 
to be able to fly. That sounds funny to me because why would they retest them? Like in other words, if I'm if I'm gonna test you to see if something is affecting you, I'm gonna test you once. Yeah. A time period goes by. Now I test you again to see if whatever that was is affecting you. Yeah. If they test their EKG at first to be healthy, that's yeah. fine. Why are they retesting them they, after? They it's almost like they, they wanted them. to. They retest to them every year. Yeah. Oh, every year. So, oh, yeah. Oh, so now they're good. higher. So at this point, yeah, it's it's definitely a major concern. Anybody's EKG is a range is a major concern. So that that's something like you look at you're like if we get somebody's EKG and they're right, yeah. you're going to a specialist, homie. I actually have a client. I actually have a client that's a pilot. His name's Ryan. Ryan, if you're watching, I'm gonna talk to you. Yes. Let me know because I want to know about all this stuff. He yes. trains at Crunch. Good friend of mine, but yes. uh, he's a client too. But yeah, Ask I want to know about that. My buddy, he uh, flies, used to fly for the airlines, and yeah. he had heart problems. So yeah. they actually took him off for flying, and yeah. I mean, he didn't want to lose his job. No. So he couldn't fake it or anything. Yeah, but I mean, right. if you've got a pilot that might have a heart attack, you don't want them flying. No, you know, they gotta definitely not. Oh, yeah, yeah makes sense. Definitely not. Yeah. It was crazy. But it's not just heart stuff. There's other stuff that you could yeah. someone could suddenly go. Except for that alcoholism, you never know. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. A lot of pilots, a lot of pilots drink. You want those A lot, a lot of pilots were drinking. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of people's lives, yeah, for sure, 100%. It's crazy. You know, mm -hmm. so, I mean, it's something it's, it's something a little crazy. So why did you at least say I'm 6'181 pounds? So 6'181 pounds isn't too bad, right? But That's actually, if, according to, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah, yeah. According to the height weight chart, that's yeah, actually BMI. right in range. Like, yeah. if you look at the how tall you're supposed to yeah. be. Because I'm about 6'3", about, about 280, yeah. so I'm always like, Whenever I do the test, you're overweight. No, you're 100 pounds overweight. Yeah, like, I don't have any fat on my body. What do you mean I'm? A <laughs> well, see, that's what the BMI. It, 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 it's not good, right? Because if you got a guy like Drew, yeah, he, on paper he's <laughs> overweight and obese. Yeah. But you know, in person, when you see the guy, you're like, this dude ain't overweight and obese. What's yeah. going on here? This ain't right. Yeah, like when I meet guys, like when I tell them my height and weight before they see me, if I'm yeah. talking online, or yeah. you know, if I have a big sweatshirt or something, yeah. like. Oh yeah, you're about the size of an offensive lineman. I'm like, no, 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 no. no, no, no. I'm the height and weight, maybe, yeah, of an offensive lineman. Yeah, I don't ever yeah. want to be the size no, of an offensive lineman. Definitely so, not. Yeah. Definitely not. Um, but yeah, it's just something you know. Something to think about. With 181 pounds, listen, you can have a lot of fat mass. I'm not going to lie to you and sit here and say no. You, but where you're at percentage wise, who knows? Unless you really get tested. It almost seems like a typo because I can't imagine. I mean, six one one eighty is usually a good lean. Good usually, height and lean weight. Usually, so I mean, I'm, listen, I'm, interested, you know, I'm interested to see what his what his body actually looks like. Yeah, because that seems like a good height, good weight, healthy. If you said you were six one and one eighty, two eighty, then I would say maybe thirty yeah. pounds. Yeah, thirty I mean, percent. But but like I said, it all depends on how your body is structured, right? Have yeah. you been working out for a long time, got a whole bunch of muscle, or have you not worked out for that long, mm. and you don't got that much muscle, and you know it's just it's a soft looking basically. But well, right now, I mean, I think I think he said he was twenty three. I think that's the guy yep. that's twenty three yep. years old. Yep. 23 years old, 6'1", 180, yeah. man, I wish I'd go back in time. Yeah. Yeah. Like with all the knowledge you have now, if you want, whether you want to be healthy, whether you want to gain muscle, yeah. whatever you want to do, all yeah. the knowledge you have now. Is oh, is that 23.9? Yeah, that's what it says. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Puts a lot then. Put 6'3", 281. See, it says normal weight though. It says yeah. normal weight yeah, in the BMI. He's, he's in the high range of the normal range. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. What's yours, Drew? 6'3", uh, 282. You could put 280. Oh. Wow, oh, she's about to be. A, it's gonna say obese. forty. He's, he's obese. <laughs> yeah, so okay. Yeah, he needs so, semi good yeah. immediately. Yeah. <laughs> so when he first made that, when I first saw his stats on how tall, how high, tall, and how tall he was and how much he's he weighed, twenty. He's twenty. I was thinking like, okay, that would be thirty percent. That would be like if I was yeah thirty percent. Yeah. So I mean. According to this, I'm um, 35. You're so obese. I haven't been over 10% body fat in see? a long time. So Yeah, see this guy. But according to this, I'm, you know, I need to. That's right. Population just like him. 60 or 70% obese or overweight. Look just like Drew. <laughs> 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 Don't they wish. Oh, uh, man. So I do need the weight loss drug. I think the weight loss drug would definitely help you out for sure, 100%. Oh, yeah. um, it'll definitely lean you out. But listen, man, you got to get on a good training program, get your nutritional plan there yeah. together because you're so young. You're 20 years old. So 20 years old, man, you got to get into the good routine of what you need to do. And that way you're going to set yourself up for success in the future years because you're really, really young. You know? So, I mean, listen, I'm in my 40s. I'm going to turn 42 this month. You know, you've got 22 years to catch up to me. And there's a lot of stuff that you can do in 22 years. So just be consistent now and just do it over time. And those results will start adding up to big things for you. Dan Wilson, I'm six foot 219. And Dan, you got some strength and muscle to you, brother. For sure, 100%. Mm -hmm. See, I told you, we're going we're gonna to get you all, all set up, man. I'm really proud of Dan where he's come transformation-wise too as well. 
Um, all right, so can anyone answer, what did I just stumble upon here? So you stumbled upon Titan Medical Center, and we're talking about all the great things. Based on your guys' experience, what's your opinion on non-circumcised men? So we don't have really experience with circumcised or non-circumcised men. That's more of urology. <laughs> That's more of like a personal thing. Yeah. Like, how would I even know? <laughs> <laughs> it's more of like a urologist question because yeah. they look at peepees every day. We don't. Yeah. Um, but at that point, you know, a girl might be able to answer yeah. to you as well. We got a 30-second 30 uh, 30 All right, guys. We appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for joining us for Titan Lifestyle every Friday with Big Drew, 2 p.m. We'll see you guys next Friday in the studio. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. And make sure you guys are following us on the social medias, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter too as well. And then go over and check out our YouTube page. Just type in Type Medical Center, hit the subscribe and all notification bell. That way you can be hooked up every week. You can never miss us. And also check us out on the podcast if you want to listen to us. Yes, we'll sir. We'll be back next week, 2 p.m. every Friday with John Titan Lifestyle. Have a great